That's what we call Julie around here is grandma. That's what we do. We call you that. You didn't know that? Oh, it's just when you're not listening. <laughs> no, it's an incredible. No, it, I am not. And that's a great thing because the, the, the kids are, are what it's all about. And uh, we know you love them. And we know you guys have always loved kids. These are the, the youth directors for Faith Ministries Youth Camp where lives have been changed year after year after year. And I can't tell you how many of our own kids from this ministry have gone to camp, had their lives completely changed. Is that, is that true, Isaac? That's my grandson right there, and he's one of them. And there's my, uh, what are you? <laughs> my granddaughter. Have you been changed by youth camp? Did these people ever minister to you? Wow, that is so cool. That's just our kids. What about everybody else in this place that have had their kids ministered? Anybody? Yeah, uh-huh. A whole bunch of us, huh? Isn't that amazing? You guys are awesome. You do an inc a phenomenal job. We can't tell you how, how proud we are of you. We love you. We bless you. And just come up here and impart to us. Besides them loving kids, as you're coming, besides them loving kids, they, Gary, you just crack us up, man. This guy makes me laugh, and, and I just love you, man. I just get a, he just cracks me up. Amen? Ole! <laughs> it's, it's beautiful when God gives you um, an idea and he lets you just kind of run with it and create it, having never done a camp with Faith Ministries, and I, I started doing camps back in 1974, I think it was. Yeah, I'm 39. So. Grandpa. Grandpa. And... Uh, so the first, Dave and Bonnie had come and said, would you do a youth camp for our network? And I thought, well, yeah. I don't, I don't know why I didn't think of that. Why did they have to think of it? Because I've been doing camps. And so in 1999, we did our first youth camp. And uh, just the format that God had given me, to, what to do was to train young people in two areas. One, leadership. And two, to operate in the Holy Spirit. And that was kind of, kind of the premise of what we wanted to do as far as the training side. But the foundation was very simple. Love God, love people. And that's what we do at camp is that we come in and we love kids unconditionally where they're at. We don't make them change their personality as they come into the gate, change their clothes or any of that stuff. We, we let them come in and experience the true love of God and how God accepts them and wants to do in their life. And so, so we've been doing that since 1999. And when we first started doing that, uh, Dennis and Denise and their church, they would uh, fundraise and they would bring a busload, one of those chartered busloads of 40 kids and leaders uh, to camp. And uh, I don't think you could get that uh, bus up to uh, Bear Trap these days. It's a little windy road. But but we would bring, and they would come in from everywhere. And we would, uh, just in a short week of time, in, in from Monday through Friday, the life-changing event that went on in their lives. You could see it, the transformation as the week goes on. Mm -hmm. And they are ready. Are they ready? Oh, ready. Got the video, and now we need music. Mm -hmm.
Just the kids' lives are t transformed at camp. What an amazing thing. Yeah. Uh, so we're grateful. So grateful. Um, anyway. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so very much for this time together. God, that you are just showing us your love and your goodness and, and all that that entails and that this life... This life can be enjoyed. This life can be traveled through in a way that people without you have no idea. God, because you minister to our hearts, we change from the heart, from the inside out. God, and we are just so thankful to be doing it together. That we're not alone. That we're not alone because you're always with us. And that we're not alone because we have the body of Christ. So thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, it's kind of an amazing thing, you know, and this is what we see yes. with, with youth camp as well, the themes that God gives us because we get them like a year in advance. And then to see what comes up through the year and how exactly right on the themes are that he gives us. Yeah. So this year our theme is The Matrix. And no, we don't play the movie for those of you who didn't like it, didn't see it or don't care. We did not, we're, it's not about the movie, but it's about the concept behind these movies. Yeah. And The Matrix is about being plugged into a system. And you can see today, our kids are being plugged, and we all are, but the kids especially are being plugged into a train of thought. You know, this is right, this is wrong. This is, you know, and, and we all know the, the subjects out there, because we're, us older people are like, what? the heck is going on? Yeah. But that's the matrix. That's the matrix. There's plugging it in. Everybody thinks the same. You know, it's kind of like for us. And I saw a meme and it was a person's head. And, and, you know, the media says, okay, you have to care about Ukraine now. And it puts the little chip in. And everybody's like, yeah, Ukraine. Now, okay, okay. Now we're going to put this. And, you know, it's just the media, social media. It's telling our kids who they are and what to think. And it's just the matrix is about breaking that and giving them some fun facts. Like, did you know that Bill Nye, the science guy, is not a scientist? He's an actor playing yeah, a scientist. I, I told him that down in Knox City. You should have seen the shock on the kid's face. Because they had been so programmed that this Bill Nye, the science guy, they gave Knows him this time. Huh? But he's just reading a script. Yeah. So these kind of things where you just accept things because they're told you. And to give them a clue about even climate change. I mean, we're going to get in, we're going to get into some of the programming because somebody has to because they're just going along with their being fed, you know, being fed, being fed, and they have no idea that there yeah. might be another thought out there. Yeah. That's truth. You know, so that's what this and and it was so because that was what was just so evident throughout this was the, the programming that they're yeah. doing to our kids. Yeah. They're just regurgitating what they've been set, exactly. taught. And, so uh, we're going to break the matrix. And, and the thing is, is that when you've walked in the truth and you know truth, you can see the lie. Yeah. And you're free from it. And like, like we've been talking about this week is that where there is light, there is no darkness. Yeah. We don't walk in the shadows. We walk in the light. That's right. So it's, our theme is Arise and Shine Together. So tonight we're going to talk about together. But before, I'm going to read our verse, Isaiah 60, 1 and 2, and the Amplified, which Han says was the woman's version, because it has a lot of words. <laughs> because it explains it 
better. You get wore out, don't you guys, man? You're reading the Amplified. Man. Oh, man. I it's just a, read two paragraphs. Go ahead. It says, arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Anybody have depression or uh, the circumstances? And rise to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I just love the fact that the Bible is more true today. You know, during the pandemic, I think Psalms came more alive than it ever had been. Because it would talk about the wicked, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, God, the wicked. Because I, before, I, I kind of thought, you know, people were bad, but I didn't know about the wicked. And then we found out they're really out there. And I was like, wow, Psalms is like reading the paper, the good paper, like Liberty News or something. Yeah. All right, so for those that like definitions and meat, here's a little bit. It's coming up. So the definition of together, you may want to write this down. We got this straight out. It's the state, condition, or quality of being together. Man, I, I tell you, I almost fell out of my chair when I read that, that I'm going to take that and we're going to preach on that because that's good, you know. <laughs> Being together, union, unity, or togetherness. <laughs> they looped us back in with that one, pulled me back in and got me. So, so I'm like, okay. That must have come straight out of the Hebrew text right there. But one of the things as I was meditating on this is that when we think of together, we think of like a crowd of people. You know, whether like you're at a sporting event or you're at a wedding or you're at some class or, or a conference or something like that, that's a group of people. But the together that we're talking about here is deeper than that definition, and we're going to get there. So there are two points that we want to touch on about together. One is connection, and the other one is community. Yeah, because in these past few years, these past couple years, we've experienced this forced separation. It was a forced and a level of disconnect in one way or another, I know my um, oldest daughter, our oldest daughter, Ashley, was fired from her job because she chose not to have a vaccine. You know, so disconnected from her livelihood of the last seven years, she worked there and she was just out. And then we have another friend yeah. who worked at a mine and they said, you know, no, you can't have a job anymore. And so that's a disconnection. Or, and then like Ed was talking about, we, we here at church, we met outside for about four weeks and then we said, well, this is dumb. And we came back. The, the dumbest thing, one of the dumbest things, was when they shut down the restaurants but let them build an outside tent to be in to eat. So you're inside, but you're outside. Yeah. It's that sanitation thought uh-huh. of going outside to inside <laughs> together. Toge- <laughs> <laughs> Man. But all this, what happened, what, what they did, what they did to us, what the most evil thing about the pandemic was that the way they separated everyone. And they put on masks and then they said six feet. You know, they just made that up. Or I read another one, if you guys heard this, that that's what they do in the satanic uh, rituals. They have to stand six feet apart and wear masks. So either way, it was evil. It was evil. And that's what they did. They, they, they separated by space and then by mask and they put it on and then you couldn't connect. I know I didn't make eye contact because, you know, I would wear my mask here and I didn't want them to yell at me, which they did. You know, I know Ed didn't wear a mask, but I did because I went in Costco, okay? But, um, but in, in the city of Denver, they were even saying, so um, they were even saying that you couldn't throw a football with your family member. I mean, it got insanity. Outside Outside, in the park. In the park. You couldn't throw a football. No, that was the mayor of Denver said that. Yeah. So these kind of things came to separate. Well, the one good thing, or there were many actually, because when you know God, even the worst of things, he turns for good. 
And my daughter who lived in California, you know, shut down. We didn't know what was going to happen. And we're like, yeah, come home, because her job was in um, party planning. She was a wedding planner. Well, there were no weddings. And so she took her car and left as fast as she could, you know, because we didn't know they were going to shut down the, the borders. And, you know, it, it was crazy. And so she came out, and she actually spent the whole year with us, with her dogs. We had an extra. And then so my, my daughters, too, have now moved away, but we all lived here. And we just get together all the time. And we'd go to City Denver City Park, but we'd sit kind of far apart because we had one lady come, and there were a lot of us. And because um, I have a lot of girls, let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, there, we, there's, a, there's a lot of them. There were like five of us. And so we'd sit kind of far apart. And from like 40 feet back, this lady was like, do you guys all live in the same house? And Sherry looks back and said, yes. <laughs> but it's like, and then she actually went around and got some park authority and was going to try to send us home. So anyway, that's the insanity. That's the, the disconnection that they gave a good, you know, they gave us a good go. And, and we did it for a second. And then we're like, well, this just, we can't do this. And so then we just kept getting together because they can't tell us what to do. No, no, not at all. But, uh, you know, as they have come up with these rules and, and all this stuff, it really made me think about the scribes and the Pharisees and how they tried to define what work was or how they tried to define what the law meant, the interpretation of the law. And here they are lining out all these things and you've got to follow these verbatim in order to be safe. And so what happened was is that the result of that in that time period is that people began to not trust themselves. And people began to not trust in the Holy Spirit that dwelt inside of well, them. Well, they were trying to make you question that. Totally. Because they were saying, oh, no, you can be sick even if you don't feel sick. But you can be sick. Yeah. Well, then your body, you're like, can I be sick when I don't feel sick? <laughs> you know, it's that questioning of... Yeah, it was a big question of, because this had never happened before, so we were like, are they, what are they telling us? Yeah, well, there was the big unknown, yeah. and so when you have the big unknown, they can bring in and feed you what they want you to know, and that's what happened, and as they did that, fear came on people. Mm -hmm. I mean, people that would be just in common, you know, good clear thinking people fear would come upon them and it would cause them to react or to act in a way that was not natural to them and to how God created us mm -hmm. and so we see connections started breaking over the last several years and becoming disconnected with people coming disconnected with our church becoming disconnected with work becoming disconnected with neighborhoods becoming disconnected with so many things but God didn't intend it to be that way. You know, they, they told us early on, two weeks, give us two weeks, wear a mask, and man, we're going to knock this thing out. Two years later, we're still knocking this thing out according to them. According so to then, them. of course, then now, because of all this that they've done, it's like, okay, what is the survey? They've done a survey of mental health and depression. Now, in January of 2019, 11% of people said they experienced like mental health and depression. After this, December of 2020, 42%. And a gal we were just with the other day said that she still hasn't, doesn't want to have people over. So they did this number on us. They, they broke up the together. Because God, from the beginning, created and intended us for have connection and not be by ourselves. In Genesis 2.18, in the Amplified Version. Hmm. It's going to be long. <laughs> It says, <laughs> it is not good, beneficial for man to be alone. So God, I will make him a helper, one who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary for him. That kind of describes me. For and you. you. Yeah. And me. Yeah. And us. It does. A helper. So we know that God always created us for connection. Yeah. And that, that was his intention. God created us for connection. And it's not just connecting with us, 
But it says over in Genesis, in chapter 3, verse 8, it says, and this is after they ate of the fruit. Here, here's what it says. It said, they heard the sound of God as he was walking in the garden. I mean, first of all, they heard God walking around. So it must have been, he's done that before. They didn't go, oh, did you hear that? There must be wolves out here. <laughs> they recognized that that was God. And so God was in the habit of walking with them daily. That means God wanted connection with them also. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just man wanting and needing connection with each other and with God. God wanted that. Mm -hmm. He sought them out. Can you say amen? amen? God sought us out. Why? He wanted connection with us. Yes. You know, for the longest time when I got saved, I didn't think God wanted connection with me. And that came from my father. And I had a dad that loved me. He provided for me, but he never interacted with me. So I took that relationship of my earthly father to my heavenly father. I thought, well, God loves me. He, pr he wants to provide for me, but he doesn't want to be connected to me on a personal level. Mm -hmm. And it took me years to overcome because I had to get in the word and see what God was really like. And when you go in and see Jesus, when you see Jesus, he says, you've seen the father. And so when I see how Jesus interacted with his disciples and people, he had connection. He had connection. So I found this quote, being connected to others socially is widely considered a fundamental human need, crucial to both well-being and survival. You know, years ago, when the premature babies were born, to keep them healthy, science said that you just separate them and you put them alone and you put them over here and leave them by themselves. Don't ever touch them because you might have your bacteria or whatever. Well, they found out that those babies without connection, without touch, without knowing somebody was there, they died because you have to have connection. Mm -hmm. And you know, I even knew somebody, because she was telling me she was premature when she was born, and she's like in her 50s, I think, and she said she still carries that sadness. It's that feeling of disconnect, and she still hadn't, you know, it was just that core for being that she had. Because we're designed to be together, to be connected with other humans, and when we don't, it affects us really deeply. So I met this doctor, and uh, she has studied the human brain. The human brain for her whole, she's in her 70s, her whole career, and she had some very fascinating facts about the brain. But one of the things she said is that when we are born, our brain scans the room to see who we connect with. So God literally has created us for connection. So you think about that, is that when we just, as soon as we come on the earth, we're like, oh, who am I connected? Who are my people? Where's my group? And then, then if, you know, how, how that affects us if the people in the room are disconnected or they're not, you know, or not there. Yeah. So these are the things God has created us for that we are, have to be aware of. Yeah. And that, that can happen. When you say that, you say, well, the baby's brain scans the room to see who it connect with. And you're thinking there in your mind, his eyes aren't even open. How can he scan? And there are so many more senses that we have beyond just our eyes. Mm -hmm. when, you, when the baby's in the womb, when the father speaks to the baby over and over, guess what? When the baby's born, the baby recognizes dad's voice. He recognizes mom's voice without his eyes being open. There's that connection there. There's that presence there. You know, disconnection causes us to break down. Now you say, Gary, how do you know that? Well, in wartime, one of the things they do with prisoners when they want to break them down is they isolate them. They separate him from human connection for long periods of time. And they even do this in the prison system. One of the statistics we read was is that premature deaths after being released from prison, premature deaths by suicide, homicide, and opioid overdose 
has been related to those or um, connected to those who have been in isolation in prison. So they even, get back. Even just one day. Even just one day. So. It has that effect on them mentally. And so when they get out and they're back in a community, they can't connect. They're disconnected. They don't know how to react. PTSD. Our, our, our soldiers that come back from war and just the disconnect of what real life should be about and what they've been engaging in and they have a hard time. Allie and her husband work with guys that come back, uh, soldiers that come back and are dealing with that. Because but isolation. We, yeah, we have to be connected. Will we're, cause we're created us for connected. Yep. Connection. Connection. Which brings us to community. You know, that's, so back to Genesis 1.28, it says, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Well, there's community. He went out and said, Go create a community. He didn't just go out and say, Well, have fun, you two. He's like, Okay. Now you make more, and we do, and you have a whole group of you. And so that, you know, so what, is, what does that look like according to the Word of God? I love these verses. Romans 12.10. This is the Passion Translation. Be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow believers as members of one family. Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor of one another. And Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. It says, discover creative ways to encourage others and to motivate them towards acts of compassion, doing beautiful works as expressions of love. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate that day dawning. Yeah. So there it is. There's a connection. There's the community. We're supposed to be together. We don't isolate. These are the things that God says are good. Yeah, and I love that last part of that. In fact, we should come together even more frequently. And I think as we've come out of this season that we have to encourage each other to connect more frequently to get back into that rhythm of being in fellowship with one another, being intent with connection of relationships. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to read 1 Corinthians 12 because it talks about the human body. And I love, love the way God put it because we all have a body in this world. So we all can relate because we all live in one, right? Yeah, and this is 1 Corinthians 12 and uh, 12 through 26. It's not in the Amplified, so it's going to be a little shorter. So we'll be okay there. But this whole passage here talks about connection and community. Yeah. So, verse 12. Just as the human body is one, though it has many parts together that form one body, so too is Christ. For by one spirit we were all immersed and mingled into one single body. And no matter our status, whether we are Jews or non-Jews, oppressed or free, we are all privileged to drink deeply of the same Holy Spirit. In fact, the human body is not one single part, but rather many parts mingled into one. This is my favorite part. So if the foot were to say, since I'm not a hand, I'm not part of the body, it's forgetting that it's a vi That's how my foot talks. You know. Doesn't that make sense? It sounds like a foot, right? It's forgetting that it is still a vital part of the body. And if the ear were to say, since I'm not an eye, I'm not really part of the body. Does that sound like an ear? It's forgetting that it's still an important part of the body. Think of this way. This is great, too. If the whole body were just an eyeball, how could it hear sounds? And if the whole body were just an ear, how could it smell different fragrances? That makes so much sense. But God has carefully designed each member and placed it in the body to function as he desires. Diversity is required. For if the body consisted of one single part, there wouldn't be a body at all. So now we see that there are many differing parts and functions, not one, but one body in the same thing. And it goes on. It's still, he's clever. God is clever. It would be wrong for the eye to say to the hand, I don't need you. Does that sound the eye? That kind of sounds like an eye. And equally wrong for the head to say to the foot, I don't need you. 
In fact, the weaker parts of our bodies, the more essential and vital they are. The body parts we think are less honorable, we treat with greater respect. And the body parts that need to be covered in public, we treat with propriety and clothe them. But some of our body parts don't require as much attention. Instead, God has mingled the body parts together, giving greater honor to the lesser members who lacked it. He has done this intentionally so that every member would look after the others with mutual concern and so that there will be no division in the body. In that way, whatever happens to one member happens to all. If one suffers, everyone suffers. If one is honored, everyone rejoices. I mean, you can't say it any better than that. We all need each other. If we are all one eyeball, that would just be a freak show. You yeah, know? and that's what I was going to say. Most of these... Uh, examples are where they get those odd characters in movies, like the one eye yeah. person or just the hand. They it's went chasing. to the Bible and found him. Yeah. 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 Got him out did. of that chapter and verse there. <laughs> See, that's community. Community, if it were just one thing, it'd be ridiculous. But, you know, we are all on our own journey. We, we will never see things the same way. We can be, like I said, when I was, we can be riding in the same car go in the same way, and we'll have a total different experience based on what we're thinking about or based on what. You can raise your kids in the same house, and everybody comes out differently because we're all different personalities. But in this body, this creative, diversified body, we are one, and we're made to be connect, and we're made to be community. It's just, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you, when you think about that, is that, that how God used that as an example to communicate to us what the church, how it's supposed to operate together, in harmony, together, realizing the hand is as important to, uh, uh, to your body as, as your skin. You know, there's nothing worse than looking at somebody without skin, man. It's rough. Ooh. It's tough. God intended for all that parts to be part as a whole together. And... Um, it's, it's just a beautiful example of how it connects together and it operates in unison. Community. Yeah, you know, community. Because when I've seen movies where the body is like it's possessed and it, one part wants to go this way and the other part wants to go that way and it's, you know, doing all this weird stuff. It's made to go in unison. In Ecclesiastics 4, 12, in the message, it says it this way. By yourself, you're unprotected. With a friend, you can face the worst. Can you round up a third? A three-stranded rope isn't easily snapped. A three-fold cord isn't easily broken. And so that is, that's the community. You know, you, we need people to help us through. And this together, and, and you know, another thing that the pandemic did was the anger and divisiveness in, in every area of life, you know, it, it was just one thing after another where there was, we were angry and then we were, I wasn't, but, well, no, I was, I was angry. I was angry sometimes. But, I mean, we were just, it was divisive and we've had family members who said, well, we can't be with you anymore because you think like this. And, you know, then they go their way and we, I don't know if we'll, literally, I don't know if we'll see them again in this life. We don't know. But it was because of what society has created as points that were, you know, divisive and angry and, and even like what just happened in Texas, the shooting. And then Michaela, my, my youngest daughter, our youngest daughter has a online thrift business. She sells children's clothes. Simple, right? Well, somebody in their group was like, well, if you don't do this about the shooting, then you can't be my friend. And I'm going to unfriend you. And then she created this, this thing. It was this incident on, in the thrift page selling community. But that's what they've done. They've done that to, to us as a whole, as a community. And, and so we, we, as the body of Christ, we don't have to go there because we know we're supposed to be kind and gentle and cheer each other on, the biggest cheerleaders. That's community. That is community. Mm -hmm. And I, I love the example that Dave and Bonnie has set forth in the A-team that is set forth in our, our network of community in that there's no tier system. Everybody's on the same plateau. Everybody's on the same level. We're all considered brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and because of that, you know, the fellowship that we have is like when we walk in, it's, it's like brothers and sisters. 
and you're not walking into somebody that you have to bow down before, or you have to be careful the words you say around them or how you hug them, you know, in case, you know, some of them you don't hug, you're not supposed to hug, or you got to have the right handshake and everything. But, you know, with camp, we, as we did camp, we did the same thing. There's no tears at camp. We're all the same. We're all out there. Our leadership is right out there with the kids. And we are demonstrating and teaching young people the love of God and just how he was. That's how Jesus was, man. He was just with the people. He was with his disciples. He went around. He wasn't like off over on the side and say, when I come and approach you, it's okay. Don't and you'll look know. in my eyes. Don't. Look down. Don't look. Don't make contact. It's not what Jesus did, man. He okay, I, got, I was thinking. My, one of our son-in-laws worked for a ministry. I don't even know which one it was, down south. And the leader, when they would walk in, they would say, okay, now when he walks in, then they'd have this whole crew. You open the door. You don't look at him. You shake his hand. You do this. And it was like these things as the leader came through and, 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 and he got it wrong once. And they just chewed him up and spit him out because he didn't, he shook when he should have hugged or something. Yeah. It was, it's bizarre. But that's where some people go because they, they I don't know why they go there because we don't go there. <laughs> are you going to bow to me? What are you doing? I was getting ready to shake your hand. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> So, but we created this community, and I love the thing about how that with our, our camp system, we've got leaders that come and participate from all over, and they just flow together, and just, you know, it's just like smooth. It's just so smooth running, and in that, we know that there's a safe place for all of us, and we feel love, and we feel a camaraderie. And that whatever happens, you can call one of them up and say, hey, brother, sister, what's going on in my life? I need some prayer. And we've done that, you know, many times. And I know last year, for those that don't know, as we uh, came out of uh, camp last year, we came down off the mountain, got home, and we came home to the news that our son, Darren, committed suicide. And here we are. I had 50 kids and leaders at my house to have pizza time. Denise was there, and uh, we'd gotten the word through some, her daughter, actually, uh, Allie, because they didn't know how to get hold of us, and it came back through that way. And I, I just look back and I think, God, the community, brothers, the people that just surrounded us and loved us and prayed for us. just held us up and it, it was not an easy thing for Sherry and us and well, his son family. David our, our family our whole family and uh, but to know the type of community that we have there's nothing like it God's community is amazing yeah, and, and you know, the one thing, if I've seen one thing over these last few years, is that evil is well organized. <laughs> New World Order has been planning since, for hundreds of years. You're like, what? what? Let's be that well organized. Let's come together in a way, let, therefore, the destruction of the world, let's be this group that no matter what, we get along. No matter what, we connect. No matter what, we don't let these things, these these things in, that are coming up divide us. Offenses. Offenses that, that can be out there or competition or whatever it is or past hurts or whatever it has been or what it, mm. I, it, it shouldn't be because we have a job. We, ha we are the light. We have something to do and we can do it together. And I love how Scott has connected with Helen and, and Claudia has connected with Helen and people just connected and we connect with Ben and then we get Joel and then, you know, just different. And then Dan and Nancy connected with you guys and then Josh and here, you're here because of Ed and, and, you know, that's how it works. It's this, it's this living organism. We're like a, we're like a living body. You know, um, might be the hand or the foot, but we're all important. And I love that that's what we know. We know this because dad and mom knew this. Dave and Bonnie never 
you know, uh, and that's, uh, so I went to Oral Roberts University and, and I met, I was in his TV orchestra, so I was around him, but if you've ever felt somebody's um, energy or distance, his was like this thick, it was, or maybe even more. You were not, you, you didn't want to make eye contact and you didn't want to, you know, he was, whatever he had been, unapproachable, extremely unapproachable. And he had this wall, that's what I'm thinking of. He had a wall. And so that's, you know, was university, but then I could always come home and mom and dad were real. And they were, and that's why I think I never went through a rebellion or did anything because they were real. And then I knew God was real because they weren't putting on a show in front and they go home and do something else. You know, they were who they were. And they never pretended to be some big shot. And they, they just encouraged other people. And um, that's a big part of, of the body. And that's a big part of community is that encouragement. I mean, be each other's biggest cheerleaders, right? Yes. So there's another aspect of community and together, or more, more, probably together more, is that you can be together and still feel alone. Because a lot of times with connection, it's like we're born, I, I see it as we're born with little feelers, little connectors out, and according to what happens to us, we just bring them all in sometimes. And so in my life, when I went to Oral Roberts and I met my husband then, and we got married my junior year of college, so I was very young, and then we came back to, after I graduated, we came back to Colorado and worked with mom and dad, but... At the time, I didn't know he was an alcoholic. And if you don't know that, then you're walking blind for a lot of what's happening in your life. And you don't know because they are, they're very irrational and it's walking on eggshells. And, and so what happened after almost 20 years of that is I had disconnected. And I had disconnected from, look at, oh, hmm. um, I'm not the only one at Christ. I know. I had disconnected We're from life. We together. Let's cry together. Oh, well, it says that. That's actually very biblical. You cry with those who cry, and you, and you be happy with those who are happy. And so I had disconnected, and I didn't even know it. I wasn't aware. And, and, and I just pulled in and, and wasn't really able to connect because there's a difference between being together and connecting. And so I... Um, I wasn't aware, and then I got married, and then my little heart was healed because I was married to Gary, and he's awesome, and, you know, just going through the steps of that. But at some point, I, it, it was like, oh, man, I am super disconnected here. I don't want to be this way. God, please help me connect back into life in a way. Let me have relationships. Let me have friends. Because we were in Greeley, and, and, and we had a big church. It was, you know, big, thriving, and, and lots of friends. But as time went on, I don't know what happened, but by the time we were done there, I didn't have one friend. I was like, where are my friends? Where are my friends at? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, my sisters, yeah. yeah. Well, my one sister. <laughs> but, um, but it was that kind of thing where I had become so disconnected that I couldn't even connect to the people around me. And maybe it was me, maybe it was them, I don't know. But I actually went to counselor to figure out how to connect back. And she told me, she was the kind of counselor who from Russell testing would tell you what was written on your heart. And I'd written something on my heart that caused me to disconnect. And, and working through that, and then she gave me, so it was like she gave you the put off, put on, she, what you were. Um, I had written on my heart when I was young that I was a burden. And so that kind of then, through my, my whole life, that was my relationships. Any long story. But then she, the flip side, what I really am was a gift. And so then it was the put off and put on, and I put on that I was a gift. And I started this journey back to connection because I had lived so long. So just because we're together, or, or we, we need to connect. It's, it's not just being in a group. It's connecting, because we have to have that, and people who have that connection live longer. I mean, Tamara has friends from junior high, high school, when she was 12. She still has friends from when she was 12. I don't have any of those friends. I don't have any of those, but that's okay. Um, it's just, like I said, raised in the same house, two different experiences. But 
but here's some things. So if you find yourself disconnected, you, you got to find a way. First, you ask God, God, help me. I want to connect back into ministry. I want to connect back into life. I want to connect back into relationships. And so that is what, you know, you just got to realize that it's so important. And it's not, you don't have to feel shame that you feel alone or that you're, you know, that like there's something wrong with feeling lonely. If you feel lonely, reach out. You know, make time. It's easy to be too busy. I know we are real busy, but, uh, you know, you don't have to do, you go first sometimes. You say, hey, I'm going to call somebody up, and I'm just going to tell them, and we're just going to connect, hopefully. But there are just ways. So, so if it's a thing where you're together, but you're alone, then, then there's some healing there that God can do in your heart so that you don't have to feel alone when we're together and in community. And it starts with, you know, just saying, I need a good friend. God, bring me that right friend so I can connect again, you know. Bring me the right community so I can connect with the community and plant myself in there. Mm -hmm. You know, we go back to Isaiah 61 and 2. And it says there, arise from the depression and prostration in which the circumstances have kept you. And I think about what has happened the last two, three years is that this weight of separation has come in and it's caused people to be depressed. It's caused them to lay down their calling of what God has is, is, is challenged them and given them to do in life. And so I, I know as we close here tonight, what I want us to do is that I want to pray for you. If you ha feel like you have been in a season of depression that has come upon you and you don't know why it is, we want to release that and get you connected back in with the body of Christ. Get yourself connected back in with God and with the people that are around you. That you don't have to be alone. Mm -hmm. you, you're not in this by yourself. So much of the time we isolate ourselves because we feel like we're in this on our, on our own. Mm -hmm. But God's saying, no, you're not alone. I've given you a body, and the body has many members, and those members are there to help you function and to go forward in your journey here. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add to that? No, that's good. So that's what we want to do. We want to pray for you guys, man. Everybody stand up. And I want to say, as far as family members go, it's never too late to start again with your family. Because I know with Julie and I, when we got married, we had to restart in our family. And it was a battle to get to a place where we are now. Now it's effortlessly. It's just one big loving family we enjoy. We can't wait to be together. But it wasn't that all the time. But we knew what God could do in reconciling the relationships that were there. And our family is, is proof of that. So if that's something in your life you want us to pray for, we want to do that too. We want to help you guys stand in there for your family members so that you can reconcile and have that right relationship with them that you desire, so desire in your heart. Mm -hmm. Now, Father, just bow your heads. Father, we just thank you for... Man, just such good word that has come out this whole week, man. Just the richness of truth that you've given to us so we can be awake as we walk down here. Father, I thank you that you've called us to be in connection with one another and connection with you. And we know that it's the devil that's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's tried to come and break down community and connection and relationships over these last couple of years. And we say, devil, you will not have any of that in our house. You will not have that in our family. You will not have that in our work environment, in our friendship environment. And we say, going forth in Jesus' name, we are reconnected. We are repurposed with our community. And we are re-energized to do what you've called us to do. And so right now I say in the name of Jesus, 
-hmm. rise up. In the name of Jesus, rise up. And the weight and the depression and all that that's on you is broken off in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's hard to shine when you're in depression. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want you there. And as we learned this week, that shining comes from the inside. That's where the light is. Mm -hmm. We're stirring up that light in you. Come on. If you need prayer, come up here. It's your time to get set free, delivered. Somebody to agree with you that you're going to win. Mm -hmm. You're an overcomer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Or if your heart is heavy from kind of the residual facts of what we've all been through, it can be anything. Or if there's a disconnect from your kids. Or if any, just whatever isn't as it should be, God has a solution. He has an answer. Thank you, Jesus.